Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be doing a couple of easy home decor DIYs to help you bring your old decor into the present. So we're gonna give a few items a refresh, elevate them and just bring them into this decade. First home decor DIY, we're gonna to try to transform this wall art. And this is the thing that makes me say bring things into this decade because I've literally had this for 10 years. I had initially purchased this when I was living at my mom's and I wanted a purple themed room. Who is she? I don't know. <laughs> but I did actually never end up using it. Um, you can see the plastic is still on, the labels are still on. So instead of getting rid of it, I thought the best thing to do would be to try to DIY it and make it something that I actually want to put up at this time and that gets used. So let's see how we can transform this one. To transform the wall art, I knew I wanted to try the abstract minimalist DIY plaster wall art I've been seeing everywhere. So to do this, I first started out by rolling out this plastic sheet just to cover and protect my floors. And then after 10 years I finally unwrapped the wall art and I laid it out onto the plastic to get started. I had previously picked up the supplies that I needed for this DIY at my local Home Depot so I grabbed wall plaster, a square notch trowel, some of these plastic putty knives and then you'll also need some paint in the color of your choice. My first step was just to apply the plaster onto the canvas so to do that I used the putty knives and I really had no technique here I was just getting the plaster on and spreading it to completely cover the surface. You do want to apply it pretty thick so that you can get that texture and be able to create your chosen design. And speaking of design, I came across this one online that I really liked so I decided to try to replicate it. So I used the trowel to create those lines following my inspo pic and just kind of adapted it to my canvas because it was a different shape than the inspo picture. So the best thing about this process is that there's actually no pressure to get it perfect. One, because you can actually just erase by smoothing the plaster and trying again. So if you make a mistake, just smooth it out and do it again. Two, this is abstract art. It really doesn't have to be perfect. I found that all the bumps and texture really added to the look. And three, the plaster doesn't dry fast at all. So you can really take your time and just perfect it and get it looking the way you want it. So I finished creating the design I wanted with the trowel and then I moved on to the top area of the wall art. So for that section, I just wanted a lot of texture like in the inspo image. So I just played around with the putty knife creating different lines and like swoops to add some like raised and lowered edges to have like 3D elements to the plaster. Once I was completely done and happy with my design, I just let the plaster dry completely for a few hours. And then once it was dry, I came back to it thinking that I was gonna do the sides with plaster as well, but then I decided against it. So instead I had to clean up the plaster that had gotten on the sides. So I just did that by popping them off with the edge of the trowel and then sanding it down to get that smooth surface back. When you're doing this, just make sure that you decide ahead of time if you're doing plaster or not on the sides and you can skip the step. So instead of the plaster, I decided I would just paint the sides white and add texture with the paint as the paint was drying. And then once I was done with that, I was really debating whether I should paint the canvas or not because I really liked the look of just the plain white plaster and that the original art was kind of peeking through. But then I realized that all my walls at home are white and it would just blend in too much, so I decided to paint it. So for the paint color, I mixed two colors that I had from Bare. The first one is canvas luggage that I had left over from doing my office feature wall, and then the other color was just just ultra white and then I gave the canvas a few good coats using that mixture ensuring that all like the little nooks and crannies got a coat of paint you really have to get in there there's so much texture so you really have to work the paint around to get it evenly coated so I did that and just let it dry here is how the wall art transformation turned out I love it I feel like a full artist okay <laughs> I do take commissions, let me know. I'm really happy with it. I love the design that I picked. I didn't do it exactly just because the shape of my canvas was different, but really happy with it. I love the amount of texture on this. Like, oh, it's so good. And I'm also really happy that I ended up painting it. I wanted it to pop a little bit, but not too much. So I went with the subtle color. And again, I just absolutely love it. This looks like very professional to me. I feel like if I saw this at a store, I would want to buy it. Um, I wouldn't pay like a million dollars for it, but you know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, that is the first DIY thumbs up from me let me know what you guys think so this vase right here is gonna be DIY number two I recently got it I randomly spotted it at Dustin's warehouse it was a leftover prop from one of his videos that he didn't need anymore and I saw some potential so I grabbed it I do like the shape of it I wish it was bigger if this was like 
oh, if it was bigger, I think it'd be better, but it's okay. <laughs> and I do like the line detail on it. I'm just really not a fan of this glass, like chrome finish almost in this orangey yellow color. But like I said, I'm seeing some potential. So let's see what we can do with this one. My first step with the vase was to spray paint it since I wanted to completely cover and get rid of that color. So I had picked up this matte spray paint again from Home Depot and set up a little spray paint area just outside of my garage. And I just spray painted the entire vase and waited for it to dry. Once it was dry, I brought the vase back inside and got working on painting it some more. This time I went with these chalk paint colors, which I also mixed with a little bit of the canvas luggage color to get my ideal shades. I was going for an antique rustic look. I really wanted the vase to look aged like it was dug up from somewhere so to get that look i painted using a wet paper towel which i scrunched up and dipped in the paint and then just dabbed it onto the surface of the vase the paper towel trick works really great it adds almost this textured kind of look and just adds a lot more dimension that i really liked you just want to keep at it covering the vase and working with the different colors to add dimension with darker and lighter areas there's also no pressure of messing this up if you are not happy with a spot you can just wipe the paint off with a clean wet paper towel and try again once I was finally happy with the look of the vase, I just let it dry to finish. Here's how the vase turned out. I am very pleased with this one as well. I'm like just super impressed with these like easy techniques, but the transformation that they give, like anyone can do this. I promise you, you can do this. Very much has that look of like something that was found in a ruin somewhere in Europe or something from an older civilization. And I really like that look much more than the initial orangey chrome look we were going with. I think this looks so cool. I've already styled it with some dried um, lavender in my bathroom and I think it looks really good. I feel like it would look good in my pantry as well. But anyways, super happy with this. If you have something lying around that you're not using, I'm telling you transform it and give it new life because this is this is cool. Next up is another purple piece for my purple room. <laughs> So I have this vase. I remember finding this at a thrift store forever and ever ago and thinking, oh my God, it's purple. It's gonna be a perfect fit for my purple room. Um, I only ended up storing like paper clips and elastics. Like I literally had it stacked to here. I think this vase deserves better and deserves a facelift. So let's go ahead and do that. With this next vase, I really wanted to add a lot more texture and get rid of the purple color as well. So what I did was work with more plaster, which I applied all over the vase in a thin layer and added texture by pressing and lifting my gloved hand from the vase. By doing this, the plaster kind of sticks to the glove as it lifts to create these rock-like bumps all over the vase, giving me the exact texture I was looking for. So I did this all around the vase and once I was happy with the look I went ahead and let the vase dry for a little bit. Once it was dry it was time to go ahead and start painting so I initially started by mixing the brown chalk paint with the canvas luggage paint as well and using the paper towel technique to continue to build the texture but as I was painting I realized I wasn't loving the color and the paper towel technique wasn't giving me the coverage that I wanted with this one so I just finished that coat let it dry and then when I came back to it I just painted the second coat using canvas luggage mixed with a little bit of white as well and I painted it on with a paintbrush instead to get better coverage which I was much happier with. Here's how the second vase turned out. I was a little concerned in the middle of that that it wasn't going to turn out but it turns out it was just one of those trust the process moments and it really did turn out. I really like it. I wish you guys could feel it. The texture is just incredible. That technique of the plaster with the gloves is so good. Like just when it's sitting out like this it really does look like stone and that's exactly what I wanted. It's so good and so much better than the purple gradient. And now this vase has new life and yeah, I can't wait to style it in my house. Not sure again where this one's gonna go, but we will find a home for her. I'm just really happy that it turned out so well. Those were the three DIYs I had to share with you guys. I feel like they turned out so good. Like we really did bring my past decor into the present. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments, if you like them, if you'll try them. And here are two more videos to watch and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.